People's Health, your Medicare health team. It appeared to be an ordinary suitcase, but this suitcase was anything but ordinary. The SOE suitcase radio was the communications lifeline for SOE agents behind European enemy lines during World War II. I'm Ron Gorell, and welcome to Inside the Vault. Today we're going to visit with Tom Chikansky, head curator at the National World War II Museum, to learn more about the SOE suitcase radio. Tom, could you tell us about this a bit more? Well, as you mentioned, Ron, this appears to be an ordinary suitcase. You picked it up and and notice that it is very heavy, it's very it is heavy. jammed with components, uh, and that might be its only giveaway. But other than that, it's an ordinary suitcase, but when you open it up, as you said, it's anything but ordinary. This is a Mark II radio. These were issued out to all types, special operations executive agents who operated in Europe. These people were so well versed in the language and customs that they blended into the general population. I and see. this was their lifeline back to Europe. I see. They could use this radio to receive instructions and also to broadcast to flights that were coming in to bring them supplies and equipment. I see. And how well did the radio work? It was very effective. Uh, it had three main components. Uh, power supply here, mm -hmm. the uh, receiver here, and the transmitter. Mm -hmm. uh, it would only send and receive Morse code, so it sent signal rather than voice communications. And so the special operations executive agents would all have to take classes in uh, Morse, Morse code. code. I see. Right. You see uh, movies, you know, about uh, clandestine operations and they're always parachuting out of airplanes. They parachuted with this? They often did parachute. Uh, there's a very famous American who was a SOE agent who had lost a leg in the 20s. And they actually had small aircraft that would land on a, a farm field, drop people off, and, and the plane takes off almost immediately. I see. But, uh, but yes, they did airdrop these. Uh, they could do that in a padded case, uh, that type of thing. The power supply was unique in that it, it was intended to be able to adapt almost any type of power that was available. Uh -huh. You could use car batteries or generators from cars hooked up to right. bicycles, right. or if you still had... Uh, commercial power, you could mm -hmm. use that, right. and, and so uh, it was intended to be versatile and adaptable and easy to maintain and operate. Well, thanks, Tom. That was very informative, and I hope you will join us again for Inside the Vault here at the National World War II Museum in New Orleans. The National World War II Museum tells the story of the war that changed the world, why it was fought, how it was won, and what it means today. We invite you to visit us in New Orleans and, until then, explore our website, www.nationalww2museum.org. People's Health, your Medicare health team.